Look, the dynamic duo. If there is a possibility of bringing Elizabeth Olsen's Scarlet Witch back, at least from what I've seen already, this would be the perfect way to do it. I, I agree with you, but let me ask you yeah. this. My opinion of it is that, bro, like, let's can we move on from from Scarlet Witch already? Like, I don't get it. Like, when did Scarlet Witch become such a major staple in the Marvel Universe that she has to be brought back over and over and over again? Uh, I'm ready, and I'm not against her not coming coming back. Maybe it's because of Elizabeth Olsen that they're bringing her back, but I'm ready to move on. From from uh from Wanda Vision. I mean from uh Wanda. It's called Partner, you just answered your own question. Somehow Elizabeth Olsen took the character of the Scarlet Witch even going back to the Avengers material and she put a stamp on Wanda that made her her own and she made the character a lot stronger and a lot more engaging than generally what we see even in the comics or most of them. And Marvel has been trying desperately people to have her come back. She has said uh, she would only come back if they really did something that she felt was spectacular. Otherwise, no. But I'm really hoping that by the last episode of this that we see Wanda somewhere. Oh, so you want you you would you would I'm, want one? I'm hoping. She comes back somehow. Interesting, interesting. For me, for me, I, I don't have that hope. I, I, I think I'm ready to move on from Wonder, and I don't think she's that that compelling of a character. I, I don't right. think. It, yeah, but but that that you know that that's fine. I think. Um, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think we could move on from it. Um, yeah, I think we've been there, done that type of thing. I, I think we've been there, done that. Um, what? I think the question, ah, there's, there's the question I was going to ask you. Do you think that this change in, in Agatha all along, the, the difference in the quality of that show, do you think it's purposeful or accidental? Do you think it was a situation where Kevin Feige was like, guys, we need to redo these things. We need to re-infuse quality in our, in our material. We need to excuse me, not take our audience for granted um, and and work a little bit harder on the shows compared to like shows like, you know, we have to be fair. We have to be fair. And it's, you know, this idea that all, all you know, Marvel MCU movies were bad and, and, and you know, MCU was just in such a bad, it, that's, it's not true. Um, at the height of it, there were good quality shows being done. But there were also some crappy stuff being done at the same time. Mm. So you've got Thor, Love and Thunder. You've got She Hulk. Those were great. <laughs> those were those were crappy, poorly delivered stuff. But at the same time, you had uh, Ms. Marvel, which to me it was a lovely, wonderfully delivered show. At the same time, you had Falconer, which to me was such high quality that it could have been literally a movie. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you know, you had you had Echo. By the way, I discovered Echo uh, recently, and it, I didn't even know what I was watching. A friend of mine came and we were watching something, and he was like, "Oh, you check out this show." And I'm watching it. And I'm like, "Oh, this is great. This is really good." And then I discovered that it's Kingpin. I was like, "Whoa!" I didn't realize how good mm -hmm. of a show Echo was. Um, well acted, great action scenes. So, so it's not uh, you know I'm not on the bandwagon of MCU was bad, and I don't believe that. I don't believe that whatsoever. But having said that, we're sort of starting this new phase with Wonder Vision. Do you think it's indicative of 
Kevin Feige saying, let's tighten now, tighten up our quality? Or do you think it just happens to be one of the good shows? I think it's absolutely, absolutely on purpose, partner. And I believe, honestly, that uh, Mr. Feige sat down with the rest of his team after seeing uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, and he said, okay, that's what I want from Agatha all along or any future material dealing with Wanda, Pietro, and anybody from that side of the Marvel Universe. Interesting. Because Interesting. when you really do think about it, multiverse of madness had horror elements. It did. It did. So does this. It did. It did. Yeah, people, some people rag on Multiverse of Madness. I thought it was a very good movie. I uh, love that film. Yeah, I, I think it was a very good movie. And I think that peop the people that are ragging on it are just bandwagon uh, on people. They're just jumping on the thing because, they, they, you know, it, it's, a, it's a fine movie. And it's not a masterpiece by any stretch of the imagination, but of, of entertaining, fun, action packed, true to the character, true to the genre. I got no problems whatsoever with it. And I still get a kick up seeing Black Bolt in his costume. There were a lot of fun elements to it. And not some people are like, oh, they don't like the horror aspect of of uh, of Doctor Strange. Well, you've never read Doctor Strange. You don't you don't know the character huh? because that was always a part always of it. There. That was always there. Yeah. That was always there. So I, I mean, you remember my uh, reaction when they showed Charles in the way. <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, exactly. But no, exactly. I, I, I truly think that's what happened. He said to his team, "You're going to give me this back, and this is how I want it done." So don't do it like One Division, the TV show with the cutesy, comedic, mm -hmm. bad performance. It's almost like um. Somebody said to Catherine Hahn, okay, listen, this is serious. Take this seriously. And and she showed her chops. Like she showed that, hey, I can do, you know, I can do a good job as an actress, um, as opposed to the nonsense that, that she delivered in, in the WandaVision. So. What I do like about it, partner, is it does have a few comic elements in it, but at the same time. I see elements within the storytelling um, that make me say, okay, um, this woman is a witch, she's twisted, and to be honest, she don't give a damn about what she's doing. Yeah. And uh, I love that from the character. I haven't watched the second episode yet, um, but what you said is is very, very important. And, and sometimes it's misunderstood. You can't have a comedic rift in a movie. There's a difference between having, uh, and this is, this, is the, this is the thing that the Fantastic Four needs to understand. You can have comedy in a movie when it's well incorporated. As long as it doesn't go beyond, as long as it doesn't get to the level of being silly, of being stupid, of being ridiculous. It's the difference between Guardians of the Galaxy, which was at times funny, hilarious, and Thor Ragnarok, or Thor Love and Thunder, which is another level of thing. Um, when the comedy fits within what's happening, then it makes sense. Um, when it's comedy and everybody's a comedian but it's not a comedic movie then it doesn't make any sense you see what i mean mm -hmm. and so in thor ragnarok the villains are making quips the scenes are funny hey this is my friend from hope well that doesn't make any sense whatsoever but star lord walking in and dancing to the scene and saying star lord don't you know who i am 
that makes sense because of his character, that's just how he rolls. And having the character respond like, wait, what? Like, what, what are you doing? Like this, what you're doing doesn't make sense. That works as opposed to silliness. And so that's what the Fantastic Four needs to capture because the Fantastic Four should be funny. It should make you laugh out loud, but it shouldn't be a comedy and it should never be silly. That's a big difference between the two. It's a nuanced difference, but that's what they need to do. Mm -hmm.